get ready 10 seconds Five seconds. Start. Having noticed the salient fact on which there is not much dispute, this court is firstly constrained to observe that there is no material or evidence to indicate what steps the corporation took between 30 April 1996 to 3rd February 1998. There is not one shred of evidence to indicate as to whether any notice was issued to the petitioner during this period to participate in the disciplinary proceedings. As noticed above, Although the order dated 24 April 1998 asserts that various dates had been fixed by the inquiry officer appointed on 17th February 1997, no such notice has been placed on the record nor have details of any such notice been alluded to or disclosed in the affidavit filed in these proceedings on behalf of the corporation. Even the order sheet which stands appended along with the counter affidavit of the corporation refers to dates which were fixed in 1996, on the above state of the record, the submission of the learned counsel for the petitioner that the disciplinary proceedings were revived only in 1998 after a long spell of unexplained silence and inaction appears to have force. On 17 February 1998, the corporation although being fully aware of the pendency of the disciplinary proceedings proceeded to pass an order holding that the petitioner would be treated to have retired from service with effect from 31st January 1998. If the petitioner was permitted to retire with effect from 31st January 1998, this court fails to comprehend what authority inherited in the corporation to proceed with or continue the disciplinary proceedings or to inflict any punishment upon the petitioner. As noted above, no statutory provision, rule or regulation prevalent in the corporation was referred to or relied upon to sustain the continuance of the disciplinary proceedings after the retirement of the petitioner on 31st January 1998. Once the petitioner had retired from service, no authority vested in the corporation to continue with the disciplinary proceedings which had been initiated against the petitioner. Retirement of an employee cuts the cord which connects the two entities and severs all relationship of master and servant or employer and employee. The retirement of an employee brings the curtain down upon the relationship of employer and employee. Once this event occurs, no further jurisdiction or authority vests in the employer to inflict any punishment upon the employee thereafter. Even otherwise, 
the following facts also need to be highlighted admittedly the inquiry report was submitted on 19 february 1998 a reading of the said report which stands appended as annexure 14 clearly shows that the inquiry officer has not recorded his satisfaction in respect of the guilt of the petitioner on the basis of any material or evidence on record the only conclusion recorded by the inquiry officer is that since the petitioner did not cooperate with the disciplinary proceedings and that from his conduct it is clear that he does not want the proceedings to be concluded he had no option but to record a finding that the charges stand proved it is trite law that even if disciplinary proceedings are continued and culminate ultimately ex part the inquiry officer is under a positive obligation to record his satisfaction with respect to the charges leveled against the delinquent employee with reference to the evidence based upon which the employer seeks to take action against the employee even this rudimentary and settled principle was not borne in mind by the inquiry officer the mistake committed by the inquiry officer as noted above was reiterated by the disciplinary authority in as much as neither in the order dated 24 april 1998 nor in the order dated 13th august 1999 has the disciplinary authority recorded any independent satisfaction with respect to the guilt of the petitioner based upon the evidence or material on record this of course subject to the caveat that the failure of the inquiry officer to record his conclusions on each charge is not a flaw which could perhaps have been cured by the disciplinary authority for the first time